take you to a, a familiar place for me in the Word of God, a, a place that I have taught and preached from many, many times. I want to take you to the book of, of Nehemiah and share something with you there that I feel like the Lord has uh, placed on my heart um, for tonight. But I want to, I want to, I want to tell you, I want to tell you some things before I get into it. I was asked, I was asked the other day about where our church is. The question was, where do you, where do you feel like a point of mercy is as far as a church is concerned? And I think most of you know, as I begin to explain, when this battle started with me a little, about a year and a half maybe just a little over a year and a half ago, when this uh, battle started, I felt like that that this battle was was greater than just something personal that, that I was going to uh, have to face. I felt like that with what my family had been through, I felt like it was an attack from the enemy. On not just me, but on my family, also felt like it was an attack on our church. And I shared with you that Sunday when we talked about, when I shared and said, give me this mountain, other men of God were there and shared with us what they felt about what was, what was going on. I told you then, and I felt like God was, was taking us to another level, uh, that that's what this was about, that it was a call to rise to another, to another level. That's been a little over a year and a half. We have seen, uh, we've seen some powerful things happen. We've seen miracles. The Lord has kept his hand up on me. You've seen it. You've seen, uh, the healings, uh, along the way, brother Holland, uh, walking, talking, miracle, twice on event, uh, looked like it was over, yet many of us, several of us, never, ever, I told him the other day, I said, I never gave up. I never gave up on your healing and your miracle. Um, other, other situations uh, that, that we have, have seen, miracles that, had ha- that have happened at our conference, both, both uh, conferences, uh, since the journey began, we've just seen some some things happen, and it is a it is a push for point of mercy to be a church in these last days to be a revival church, a revival church, a church that believes in uh, power and demonstration, signs and wonders. Not, not just us. I'm just saying that because of what happened, what's happened to us personally, it's, it's pushing us for other churches. It's, uh, we want them to be the very same thing in their churches that are, are, that are. And so we, we want to be that. We want to experience those powerful, powerful things. That does not come without a fight. This level change does not come with, without a tremendous, tremendous fight from the enemy, and opposition. So I was reminded uh, today of, um, of this story in the book of Nehemiah, and I could not get away from it. I, 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 I tried uh, to go a little different direction, but I couldn't get away from it. In the very first chapter of the book of Nehemiah, and I'm going to jump around with some verses, so just kind of follow me here. I'll tell you where I'll be reading from, but we, we find in this, in this very first chapter, 
We know that, that Israel was delivered from Babylonian captivity. And we have a, we have a, a man by the name of Nehemiah that was a, a highly favored man of God. I want you to see him as a man of God with a vision because he had a vision for what he wanted. We know that we know that uh, Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, Israel had come back to Jerusalem and the city they were in uh, they were in need of, of rebuilding and, and we'll talk about that. but I want you to see Nehemiah as a, as a visionary, a, a leader, um, and one that had vision of what he believed was going to happen and what he, what he wanted to happen. So we find here he's wanting, here's a leader wanting to take God's people somewhere. He has a vision for it. He sees it clearly. This is where we need to be. This is where this is where God's people need to be. This is where the city needs to be. This is this is and so he's excited, all of these things. Then there is a report that comes to him. And this report is the condition of the city and the condition of the people. So watch what he says here in um Let's go to the, the first chapter and verse number three. They said to me, talking about the report, they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are burned with fire. Now, in this, in this verse, verse number three, is the complete report and condition of everything. And I want you to notice what's going on. The people are distressed and uh, in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are burned with fire. We are seeing a people, if you will, in transition. Where they were and where God wants to take them. It's a people in transition. And I want you to know that a lot can happen. A lot will happen when it's a people in transition, a church in transition, a body in transition. So I'd like for us to look at this story in comparison maybe of, of where we are. My answer when the person asked me, where do you think the church is? And I talked about the journey. These are the words that I said. I said, I believe our church is in a transition. I believe we have gotten to a certain point, but I believe now we are in transition. And when a people is in transition, there is always going to be opposition. You never get to the next level without fighting and winning against the enemy. And I so hope that you're paying attention to me tonight. I know we're online. I'm in front of a camera and I'm talking to you here. I'm not face to face with you, but I so hope that you're paying attention to me and understanding the spiritual importance of where Point of Mercy is as your pastor, as your leader, as your visionary. I see where God wants to take us, where I want us to go as a leader, as a pastor. I, I, I see it. I, Lord, we, this, this is where we want to get to. 
we're a people in transition. The first problem in the report was the condition of the people. Now we know that the walls are broken down. We know that the gates are burned with fire. And this is, this is terrible, uh, no doubt about it. This is, this is a city that uh, we'll talk more about in just a few moments, but th this is a city that is under tremendous challenge because the walls are broken and the gates are burned. However, when Nehemiah heard the words of the report, he said, so when I heard these words, he said, I sat down and wept and mourned for, for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Uh, his concern in moving forward, in moving in transition, was, was dealing with unhealthy people people that had, had gone through some tough times and, and they were in great distress and they were in great uh, reproach. And so that was his concern because the walls, the gates, is all contingent on the health of the people because walls will not be repaired without healthy people. Uh, gates will not be rebuilt without healthy people. So everything is resting on the people and the condition of the people. So I would say to you tonight that what we see literal with Nehemiah and the Israelites at Jerusalem is a great comparison, or we can use this as a great comparison for someone unhealthy can be compared to someone spiritually that is spiritually not healthy someone that is struggling, someone that physically, though Israel was struggling physically, I think that maybe we are dealing with some people that are struggling spiritually. I think that some of you are fighting some personal battles that maybe you haven't fought in a while. Maybe there's some things that's coming up against you opposition that's coming up against you. And maybe these are things that you thought had been conquered. You thought you were victorious over, but the enemy is bringing it back. Maybe you're sitting there wondering, why is this happening to me? Why am I fighting this battle? You're going to fight this battle when we are a people in transition. The enemy is going to do everything that he possibly can to keep us at a certain level. The leader... Almighty God wants us at this other level. He wants us at this other place. But the enemy is going to do everything he can. And the only, the only way he can keep us at that lower level is to keep us fighting battles that we've already won. We shouldn't be having to fight battles that have already been conquered. These should be behind us and we should be moving forward. So what is this? This is unhealthy people. These are people that spiritually are not where they should be. Now, I don't want to accuse anyone or come across harsh or rude whatsoever and say, you all are not doing what you should do. Here's what I want to say. I want to say to you that I, I believe that the enemy is, is fighting us in a way that, is, that has caused us to possibly ease up on our prayer life. That has caused us to maybe not to be as, not to be as faithful. I know, our, I know it's vacation time. I know it's summertime. And I want to be careful with this because I want you to have time with your family. But other than uh, vacation and um, sickness or something like that, you should be in church. You should be in the house of the Lord. We have one service a week, and you should set that service aside unless you are working, unless you are sick uh, or on vacation this summer. There should be nothing else in the way of you being in the house of the Lord. Again, one service a week. You need that time together. You need Wednesday nights. I've said it, I've said it for the last several weeks. If you're involved in any kind of leadership, uh, 
I, I want you on Wednesday night Bible study online, and I'm going to find out. I'm going to do whatever I can to to see that our singers, leaders, musicians, whoever it is, I'm, I want to make sure that that you are. This is this is important. Uh, it's not that I'm trying to uh, be a lord over God's heritage. I'm trying to be a leader over God's people, and I want you healthy because the health of the church. Everything, every everything we want, everything I want for you, everything I want for the church, the growth that I want to see happen, the expansion that I want to see happen, uh, the increase in number, the harvest that I believe is, all of that, brothers and sisters, is contingent on your health, where you are spiritually. God does not promote an unspiritual church. He will push for them to go to another level, but you're not getting, we're not getting to the next level if we are not spiritually where we should be. And this is a time for you to, uh, I read the scripture today, uh, examine yourself. I, I, I believe that was Galatians chapter 6. He said, examine yourselves. That's what we should do. We should examine ourselves. And are we moving forward? Are we stuck? Have we digressed? And I think that's a, I think that's a very, very some very important things to ask ourselves tonight are we progressing are we moving moving forward are we stuck just maintaining or have we have we digressed i just want you to understand that for nehemiah the reason nehemiah sat down and he wept and he began to pray was because he understood the people's got me stuck it didn't matter what i want to do it didn't matter where i want to take them we, we, we've got to deal with the fact that these people are... And, and you know, as he began to pray, and I'm not going to read all the scriptures. You, you can read the story uh, and, 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 and go. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful story gathered, gathered everyone around. And, and here's what he did. He, he proclaimed a fast uh, through Israel uh, for all the Israelites, and he uh, wanted prayer uh, to, to go forth, which... Those are the basics. <laughs> we're not moving anywhere if we're not fasting, if we're not praying. We're, we're, not, we're not going anywhere. We're going we're gonna to stay stuck and we'll end up digressing. If you continue to not pray, there's going to be, there's going to be digression. There's, there's no doubt about it whatsoever. But one of the first things that, that they did was he encouraged them to be united. And when you continue to read on, Nehemiah goes in a specific order of families next to families. And it says something like, and besides him was so-and-so, and and besides him was so-and-so. And what that meant was the families were joined together. So one of the first things that took place to cause this transition to be successful was for God's people to be united, for them to come together. I, I, I don't know, I don't know how many times I have encouraged Point of Mercy from the beginning, well, I mean, before, before that, but especially when COVID hit over two years ago, I told you, I didn't know what all was going to happen with the lockdowns and things like that. But I told you as a church, we have got to remain united. We have got to be united. I hold to that tonight and I hold to it so strongly that if we're not united, we're not going anywhere. We are not moving to another level if we are not a people that is united. This transition is not going to be successful 
if we do not prove to be a church that is united, which means there are some things. If you're going to fight for unity, then you've got to, there's things that you've got to overcome and you've got to look over. When, when you talk about, when, when Paul talks about uh, fruits of the spirits and fruits of the spirit rather and, and uh, uh, bearing one another's burdens, one of the things he talks about is long suffering, long suffering. You know, you know what that means? That means sometimes you have to put up with some things. That means sometimes you, you, you don't let a statement or you don't let something that's happened cause you to get all bent out of shape and, and, and cause you to, the worst thing you can do is let something that somebody says or an action that somebody gave cause you to get stuck or even digress. God forbid that, would you, that you would be foolish enough to withhold praise or even miss a service because of an offense. God forbid that any of our church, we are way too mature of a church for anybody to act that foolish. That is just foolish. We f must fight for unity. Benefit of the doubt. Give, give your brothers and your sisters the benefit of the doubt. Esteem, Paul said, your your brother and sister, even more highly than yourself. I'm here to tell you that we are never going to transition properly if we are not united and fighting for unity. And if there is an issue that you cannot get over, there is a way to handle that. I think I have said this on more than one occasion in, the, in just the last few weeks. But I'm here speaking as your leader, as your visionary, We've got to have, we're a people in transition and we're, ne we're never going to get to that place of power, demonstration, signs and wonders. We are never getting there if we're not united like we should be, considering one another, communicating with one another. It's important. It's very, very important. So, so they were together. But I, I, I noticed something else about the story. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken here, uh, double check myself uh, with with some of the success that they had in in Nehemiah four and six. It it said so we built the wall, and the entire wall was joined together up to the half up to half of its height. For the people had a mind to work. Uh, now I know I'm possibly jumping ahead of myself just just a little bit. Uh, here, but the reason that I, I wanted to read that scripture to you is because I wanted you to know where the battle was. I want you to know that the people in transition, the first thing that they that they needed to do was they needed to become united. The the, the second thing that I noticed, the struggle that they were having, evidently was was in their mind. The battle was in their mind. The struggling in their mind. There's no, there's no verses that say they were impaired physically, that there wasn't anything physically that they could not do, but they weren't doing it and they weren't able to do it. And, and I think because of verse number six in chapter four, I think it's because of mentally what they were having to deal with, mentally what they were facing, how the enemy was battling them in their minds. All these years of captivity, uh, I can only imagine what the enemy was telling them. You're not going to be successful. Uh, you're, not, you're out of captivity, but you're going to be killed. Uh, you don't have any walls. You don't have any gates. Uh, you can't work. You're not, you're not worth anything. And so I, I think that they were battling uh, a lot of distress. I think they were battling a lot of anxiety. Um, I'm sure they were fighting depression because of what they'd come from. Uh, all, all these, all these things that were happening to them, it, it was, it was this battle going on in their mind. And so the prayer was, and, and the Lord touched them because it says they had a mind to work. God had to do something to them to help them conquer this battle in their minds. 
you're no good to anything. You can't, there's so many things physically that you're not going to, your, your mind, what happens to you? I, I, you know, I'll never forget uh, with my, with my first diagnosis. Oh, when the diagnosis first came that my doctor told me, I told him, I said, well, we're going to fight. We believe in the healing power of Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what we're going to do. And he said, you know, he said, that's the mindset that you've got to have. He said, I've seen people that, that were, uh, the diagnosis was not good, but their, their outlook, their mentality, uh, you know, they, they become winners because of it. They, they survive because of their outlook. And then he said, I've seen people that really, they should be able to overcome their diagnosis, but because of their mental outlook, because they just lose it mentally in their mind is where they lose it. They, they end up not making it because of that. They be, they become physically impaired. They're worse off than really what the diagnosis is because of their mind. So, so your mind, um, uh, the, the, one of the main doctors at Vanderbilt uh, told me w when she met with me uh, several months ago, she said, I, I love your outlook. She said, I would like for you to speak to uh, some of my patients. In other words, it's that outlook. There's so much that happens that is connected to your, to your mind. That, that, and it is a battle, brothers and sisters. It is a battle. I know what mine is. I know what I face every morning. I know the devil reminds me of, 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 of things every morning and tries to take me down a dark road. And I, I, it, so, it, so every day of my life, it is a battle of my mind. I am healed in the name of Jesus. God's word will, will not return void. Uh, it has been prophesied. It has been spoken. I am to preach, teach, and lead, and God will take care of the rest. Strength to strength. Give me this mountain. It is well. Kick cancer's butt. All that stuff. All that stuff. Uh, you know, I'm just giving you a, a, a fast, <laughs> a fast run through of. A, but I'm just saying that is what. Okay, so I know, I know what mine is. What is yours? Where is he fighting you? mentally. Where is your battle every day? I find that a law when I would do good, evil is present, the Apostle Paul says. So where is that for you? Because whatever that is can shut you down spiritually. It can get you to the place. Do you struggle with bipolar? Do you struggle with depression? Do you struggle with anxiety? Pornography? Jealousy? Insecurity? Are you battling some things in your mind? Uh, things of, of I'm, not, I'm not good enough. I, I uh, uh, some uh, they don't. Uh, this one don't like me anymore. They don't like me anymore. I must not be important anymore. I uh, I'm not this. I'm not that. And the entire time, the enemy rejoices because as we lose it up here. He's winning it out there. As we start losing it here, the enemy knows I've, I've, I've got, even if we're not digressing, if we're just stuck, if we're just in a pause, if we're living in a pause, <laughs> the, the, enemy's, the enemy's thrilled with that because the objective is they can't get to the next level. I can't let them get to the next level. And he'll do whatever he possibly can to keep us, to keep us here. Um, so unity, battling the mind. And this is why Nehemiah set up fasting and praying. We need the same thing. We need a, a regular routine of fasting, whether it's just a meal once a week or a full day, whatever, you, you need to be on a regular routine of fasting. You need to be on a daily routine of praying. You need to be on a daily routine, uh, a, a daily routine of reading your Bible. These are important things. So unity, battle of that mind. This people in transition, we're talking about, we're talking about a city. We're talking about the city of Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem, the walls are broken down. This is the condition of the city. 
the walls are broken down, and the gates are burned with fire. This means that... So you have to understand, for cities in those days, this is how they operated. It's not, it's not like cities today. Their defense, their protection, their livelihood, uh, their trading, uh, what came in, what came out, that was important. You had to be careful what you let in. Uh, so uh, this, this was so vital. The, the walls broken down and the gates burned with fire. This is what Nehemiah, Nehemiah knew our next level because to operate as a city is the next level. Everything doing what it's supposed to do. Walls protecting and standing as our defense. Gates operating, opening and closing. Allowing things to come in, allowing things to go out. This is that, let's, let's get to that place. Let's, let's get back to that place. So what he was praying for was revival. Revival. Because to revive is to restore. We need to get back to that place. And when we talk about revival, we are asking God to, to bring us, to take us back to a place when the church was full of signs and wonders, was full of power and demonstration. God, we need, we need to be revived. We need healing revived in our church. We need, we need signs and wonders revived in our church. We want, we want more people baptized in the name of Jesus. We, uh, we want people delivered in the name of Jesus. No matter, no matter what they are bound by, we believe that deliverance is for all and anything. You can be delivered from anything. We want more people filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. These are the things that we want. We want revival. We want this, brought, we want this back. We want this reviving. I want to operate. The health of the people is what determines the operation of the city. The spirituality of the people determines what happens in the church. The spiritual, your spiritual level is connected to where the church is going. And we're not going anywhere. If we don't rise spiritually, we'll never rise to the next level as a church. I say, let's rebuild the walls. I say, let's rebuild the gates. The, the, the bricks, the stones are laying on the ground. Let's, let's get united Let's get victory in our minds. Let's conquer these things that are, that are battling us, that are fighting us. Let's get over that. Let's move on from that in the name of Jesus. And let's get the stones off the ground and let's operate as a church. Let's operate as a city. Let me tell you something. Our protection is contingent on our level of spirituality. We are so vulnerable to things when we are not spiritually where we should be. That's why some of you are battling some of the things that you're battling right now. It's because you've become vulnerable to something that you don't have a defense against because health-wise, you're not able to repair what the enemy has broken down. You say, Pastor, that's, that's pretty heavy for a Wednesday night. I told you when I started, I, I, I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. I know I'm standing, I know I'm sitting behind a camera tonight. But I want you to understand the weight of what I am saying this evening and the importance of what I'm saying to you this evening. That some of you are about, some of you have become vulnerable to some things because you. You don't have the strength to pick up those stones and start rebuilding that wall. We have got to operate as a city. We've got to operate as a church. And it's not a church when the walls are, when the stones are laying on the ground 
and the gates are burned with fire. This is, this is the condition. And it must, it must be repaired and it must be rebuilt. And I am asking you as a church body, I am asking you to make sure you are united, that you are winning the battle in your mind, and that you are spiritually healthy. Get spiritually healthy. Before you bring a complaint, ask yourself, am I, am I where I should be spiritually? Am I, am I at the place? You know, there's so many times people bring things to us and, and, and if you're not where you should be, if I'm, if I'm counseling a married couple and they're not, or if just one is not where they should be, you can't believe, this just halts things so bad. It just, it, you, you cannot move forward when someone is not spiritual. And when I say spiritual, I, I hope you that, I hope you understand that I'm not, I'm not saying that you have to be perfect. I've taught for a couple of weeks on just getting better. Just getting better. Just, just pray a little more. Get your prayer life better. I'm not asking for perfection. I'm asking you to get healthy. There are so many things that are waiting. I want to tell you something. There are things that are waiting that, that the church, that's waiting on the church. Some powerful things, I believe, that's getting ready to happen to the church. And, and, and it's waiting on the people for the people to get where they should be. And when they get to the place that they should be, we get to where the walls are back up. We get the gates back up and, 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 and things are coming in. Things are going out. We are protected. We're, our families are, oh my goodness, this, this will be wonderful. But I, you know, I, I want you to know that personally, there are things that are coming to you. Personally, there are things that that God wants to, that I want to see happen to you and that God wants to see happen to you, not just as a body. We want to operate as a city, but I want you to be blessed. I want you to be blessed as a person. I want you to be blessed as a family. I want great things to happen to you. I want your ministry to rise to a whole new level. I want you to, to get to a, a place that you've, you've never been before. Don't let these things that would try to separate us, it's not worth it. If it will keep you from that level, it is not worth it. Healthy. Get back to being healthy. Fight for becoming more spiritual. Whatever needs to be taken out of your life if there are things that are keeping you from being spiritual if your phone is affecting you you need to make you need to make a decision if your computer is affecting you you need to make a decision if the people you're hanging around is affecting you you need to make a decision because anything that's keeping the carnality in your life anything keeping carnality in your life is keeping you from moving forward and I'm just here to tell you right now it is not worth it it is not worth it get those things move that away let's get the walls back up let's get the gates back up not just for the church but for you also you can't believe can't believe where all the Lord wants to take you where I see you going as a person and as a family you said pastor are you just General, no, 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 I'm not generalizing that. I think about every single one of you. I think about every single family in our church and what I see. And I see when some of you just live to maintain. I see some of you, as you start to digress, you start letting things out, I see you start, start backing off a little bit. Then I see others fighting, pushing. And that's, a, that's, a, that's, an exciting, that's an exciting thing to see. We are a people 
in transition. I want you to understand that tonight. We are just like just like Nehemiah and the repairing of the walls. We're in comparison to that because we are a people in transition. We are trying to get to that next passage. We're trying to get to that next place. I say, let's go. I say, let's not remain where we are. I say, let's go. Let's make this move. Let's make this transition and see what the Lord has for us as we rise to that new level. United, conquering the battle of your mind, getting healthy, get out there and repair what has been broken, rebuild what has been burned. We need the protection and we need, we need to operate as a city. We need to operate as a church. Let's not have a sign. Let's not just have a church sign. Let's operate like a church. Let's be what a church is supposed to be. Thank you.